Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online service here at Emmanuel Pentecostal Tabernacle Verge Now Macarius School. We trust that you had a great week. We're so glad that you've joined us on this Sunday morning for a time of worship and the Word. And uh, we just pray that God will speak to you greatly through the Word today and you will sense His presence as we worship together. We're going to open up with a word of prayer, and then the worship team is going to lead us in a time of worship, and then we're going to hear from the Word of God. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have today to gather in your presence through this online platform. I pray, God, your blessing upon every person who is listening. I pray, Lord, that you would speak into their lives, that you would strengthen them. Lord, that your spirit would minister to them in a special way. Be with us as we worship you. Lord, I pray today that you would speak to us through your word. We would not just be hearers of your word, but we would doers also. God, we ask this in your name and for your glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's worship together this morning. I have the source of strength when I am weak That takes me through when life is pressing me I have a source of power from above I'm covered over by a shield of love I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary Those precious blood stains they dare just for me For all my sin My sickness and my pain When I need healing I claim those precious blood stains I do not know How others make it through who never go to Calvary as I do For there's a healing, cleansing stream that flows With peace that only His redeemed can hold I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary, those precious blood stains were made there just for me, for all my sin, my sickness, and my pain. When I need healing, I claim those precious blood stains. My sickness and my pain When I need healing I claim those precious blood stains When I need healing I claim those precious blood stains They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as he goes. They shall all not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as he goes. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. That way upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings 
as he goes. They shall not, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. A bit at wait upon the Lord shall renew. Shall mount up with wings as he goes. He shall not, not be weary. He shall walk in our pain. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. He shall not, not be weary. He shall walk in our pain. Teach me, Lord. He's the Lord to win. We want to thank the worship team for leading us again today. We want to thank our volunteers and for all the hard work that they do in putting this service together. And without them, this would not be possible. So we are so grateful for them today and deeply appreciate all that they do. This morning, I want to share a message that I've entitled, God is Personal. Last week we talked about God being our refuge. Today I want to talk about God is personal. If you have your Bible, we should turn to Psalm 121. We're going to read this psalm in its entirety. Psalm 121. Uh, it begins by saying this in verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. God is personal. One of the most important truths that we as believers need to understand is not whether or not God is real because hopefully we all believe that to be true but rather the most important truth that we as believers need to understand is whether or not God is personal in other words is God more than just some being who is far away and unconcerned with what's going on in the world, and more specifically, my life. You see, in the world today, there are many who believe in God, but there are many who don't believe in that type of God. And the truth as to why that is, is because they are looking through the wrong lens. Some of you listening this morning probably have glasses. And I'm sure you would tell me that if you don't have the right glasses on, you aren't going to be able to see things very clearly. The things will be blurry, fuzzy, and you may not be even able to tell what you're looking at. You take your glasses off this morning and look at this computer screen, I might just look like a blob. Sadly, many people view God with the wrong lens. And therefore, they don't see Him as He clearly is. This is a lens through which many view God. As they look upon the world, they see so much pain. As people are forced to grieve and mourn over the loss of loved ones because of some tragedy that has taken place. Uh, they see so much evil through wars and terrorist groups that have done unmentionable things to innocent people. They see the suffering as other people in other countries without the necessities they need to live. They see so many people that are suffering with diseases and then many ask the question, how can a good or personal God allow such bad things to happen? Therefore, through all of this, they come to the conclusion, if God is real, then he is both uninvolved in the world and uninvolved in the lives of people in the world, including my own. But the people who believe these things are not seeing, are, are not seeing God clearly. They are looking through that blurry, incorrect lens. There is only one correct lens through which we can see things clearly. There's only one correct lens that we can look through to see God as clearly as He is. And it's not our feelings, it's not the circumstances around us, it's not the picture that we paint ourselves. The only lens that we can look through is 
the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. The very important statement in that verse is that the Bible is useful to teach us what is true. These ideas that God isn't personal do not have their basis in Scripture. In fact, Scripture shows us the exact opposite. And our psalm this morning that we just read gives us that clear picture. The reality of God being a personal God, a God who's concerned with our daily lives, is something that we as believers need to have engraved in our hearts because its truth will dramatically change how we live. The question is not, is God personal? But rather then, how is God a personal God? And our psalm gives us two ways to see. Number one, God is near. That's the first way in which we see that God is personal. God is near to us. In scripture, the lens through which we are supposed to view the world, the first way in which we can see that God is a personal God is the fact that he has come near to us. In our text in Psalm 121, it says, The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. Isaiah 7 to 14 tells us, now I recognize it's not Christmas, but it's worth going back through. Isaiah 7 14 tells us, All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin, referring to Mary, will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In the Old Testament we see the picture so clearly that even though God was with his people it seems like for the most part it's only from a distance. For one thing only the priest could enter into the presence of God. No ordinary human could do that. God only spoke to and through select people such as Abraham, Moses and the prophets and there was even a 400 year period where people heard nothing from God. The people of the Old Testament did have a promise that one day God would come near to them and not just to a select number of them, but to all of them. Scripture tells us in John 1 and 14 that this happened. As it says, so the word became flesh and made his home among us. Not only did God come among us through his son Jesus, who felt and experienced everything we do, but he made the promise that there was one coming after him, after him who would not just be with us, but would live inside of us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John 16 and 7, But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the Advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. We see this fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. When the disciples were gathered in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came and filled all who were there, signifying to all who believe that God is with us to stay in the person of the Holy Spirit. I usually say this at Christmas time. Christmas time is fastly approaching, so I'll say it now. Emmanuel, which is who we celebrate at Christmas, but Emmanuel just not tagged on to Christmas. Emmanuel is all year long. Emmanuel is not the God who came and went, but he's the God who is still with us through the Holy Spirit. And he is closer now than he has ever been. It is God with us that distinguishes Christianity from all other religions. In all others, God is a distant being or spirit that people reach up to. They must somehow get to their God through rules, rituals, and morality. But in Emmanuel, we have a God who reaches down to us, who has come near to us, and who dwells within us. In Acts, Paul tells some philosophers who are praying to an unknown God that God could be known and that he was near to them. He says these words, He is not far from any one of us. From in him we live and move and exist. And friends, this is an important reality to truly have engraved upon our hearts that God is with us because he is living inside of us through the Holy Spirit. And that means that no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, no matter how hard life gets, I know one thing for sure, that he is with me. 
And because He is with me, I can be like David and I can know where my help comes from. I don't need to look to other people. I don't need to try to do it on my own. I don't need to be given to fear. I don't need to be given to worry uh, because God is my help in every circumstance. And God is with me in every circumstance. And because He is with me, He will help me with every step of the journey. Secondly, God is a personal God because he cares about us. God is not only a God who came near, God is not only a God who was with us, but God is a God who cares about us. David goes on to say these words in Psalm 121, he will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel neither uh, slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon but at night. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go both now and forever. When I read those words and allow them to truly speak to my heart, I see the picture of a God who truly cares about me. And this is what he says about me in my life. He will not let me stumble. He will watch over me. He never takes a nap. He never sleeps. He stands beside me. He protects me. He won't let anything harm me from this moment till my life's journey ends. He will always watch over me. To me, that's a clear picture of a God who cares. You know, I care about my wife, Jenna. And some of the ways that I show that I care about her is that I help her. I protect her. I look after her, and anything anything tries to harm her, I try to find a way to prevent it and make things better. And God, the creator of the universe, speaks those verses about my life. There is no doubt in my mind that he cares about me and what I'm going through. In fact, the Bible tells us all to cast our cares on him. Why? Because he cares for us. Not only did David speak about the way God cares about us, but during Jesus' time on earth, he made sure that the people who listened to this teaching knew that God cared about them as well. He says these words, What is the price of five sparrows? Two copper coins. Yet God does not forget a single one of them, and the very hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. God cares enough about me, Jesus lets me know in these verses, that there isn't one detail about my life that he does not know or is not aware of. It says even the number of hair on my head is numbered. Jesus goes on to say, look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store in barns, for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable than any bird. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all of his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. You see, God is unconcerned with the things we value, like money and material possessions. His most valuable possessions is every person that's listening right now. Every person all around the world. People is what God values most of all. In our, in our own lives, when we see something that we think is valuable, valuable, we try to take care of it. Home in our house, I have a glass that my grandmother gave me before she died. Now, this glass would not mean anything to anybody else. But this was a glass that I always used when I got something to drink at her house when she was alive. And now that she is gone, this glass is valuable to me. It's so valuable to me that I, it's up in the cupboard. I never take it down and take a drink out of it because I don't want to break it. So because it's valuable, I put it in a safe place. I try my best to take care of it. You see, to God, you and I are what he values the most. And because we have such value in his eyes, we should know that he definitely cares about us and he cares about every detail in our lives. Aside from all of those things, if that isn't enough, 
Jesus did the one single action that proves to us that he cares for us more than words could ever say because he gave up his life on the cross so that you and I could experience freedom from sin and eternal life in heaven with him. He didn't have to die on the cross. He didn't have to come down into this world, be born in a manger. He didn't have to put up with the mockers and scoffers and accusations that people in that day were making against him. He didn't have to go through 40 days of temptation. He didn't have to be willingly beaten and whipped. He didn't have to do any of it, but he did. Why? Because he loves us and he cares for us. And he would go rather go through all of that than for us to be lost for eternity. That's how valuable and that's how much he cares about us. Through his word and through his ultimate sacrifice, we can be sure that God is a personal God because he cares about us. Perhaps this morning you're listening and you're facing a situation you feel like no one cares or no one is even concerned. I want you to know this morning that God cares about you and he is very concerned about what you're going through. And as the scripture we already read says, God is so concerned about what you're going through that he invites you to give that situation to him. This morning, whatever it is that you're facing, give it to him because he can help you because he cares about you. The reality is as I bring it to a close this morning, we serve a personal God who is near to us and who cares for us and will ultimately help us if we call out to him. And so this morning, we're going to pray together and we're going to ask God to help us in our time of need today. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together. Lord, I pray for every person who's listening right now. Some listening doubt that you even care about them. Some doubt that you're involved with their lives. Some doubt that you're even close to them. But I pray, God, that you would just make yourself real to them right now. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would minister to them in a special way. That you would show them that they are valuable in your eyes and that you care about them. God, that you would help them in the midst of their situation and circumstance today. Father, we pray that you would work by your Holy Spirit. You would do what only you can do, I pray right now in in these moments. And Lord, for that one who is listening who may not know you, but want that relationship with you, they want the personal relationship with Jesus, I pray that they would pray these words after me this morning. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know I need you. Forgive me, cleanse me, and help me to live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, would you please let us know we want to help you and celebrate with you on the journey today. The worship team is going to lead us in another song and then we'll have our closing together. God bless you. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross For the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, that old rugged cross So despised by the world As a wondrous attraction for me For the dear Lamb of God Lift His glory above To bear it to dark Calvary So I'll cherish The old rugged cross Till 
my trophies At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged Old rugged cross And exchange it someday For a crown And that old rugged cross Stained with blood So divine Such a wonder For beauty I see Was on that old cross Jesus offered And died to pardon And sanctify me So I cherish The old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rocket cross And exchange it someday for a crown To that old rocket cross I will ever be true It's shame and reproach gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share So I'll cherish the old rocky cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rocket cross And exchange it someday for a crown I will cling to the old rocket cross and exchange it someday for a crown. We want to thank you for joining us today. We trust that you enjoyed this time of worship together. We trust that you enjoyed the word. We pray that God encouraged you through his word today and done a work in your heart. We want to let you know that we'll be back here again next Sunday at 11 a.m. for another time of worship and a time in the Word. And we encourage you to tune in. We encourage you to share this service and invite someone to watch along with you. We ask that God would bless you this week. And we ask that your, His favor would just shine so richly upon you. That He would give you strength to face whatever this week may hold. Keep trusting Him, friend. God is with you. God cares about you. Have a good week. And we hope to see you next Sunday. God bless.